mentioned the, the 221 press was uh, from 10 years ago. Why that one? Why, why not? It's the only one I knew. Because I'm not, I, I, my stuff is very basic and that's a little bit different. And so we're just trying to tweak it to make it this team's press. Like the team, I, I've had different kind of teams that this team is a little different. So, you know, we're just working on different stuff right now to see what fits them and then experiment as we go. How well do you think they execute? I don't think we can do it, you know, for a game. I think there's spots in the game we should do it. And the reason is we're playing eight guys. And when you're playing eight guys, it's hard. I mean, I, I had a team at UMass, I played five and six guys. So we'd press early in the game and then only if we needed it because we just didn't have enough bodies to go and fly around the court when the other guy's playing eight, nine, ten guys. Are you using that press to force turnovers or just change tempo? Just to get us more aggressive. You know, and, and teams, if you get us in the half court, you space us the right way, these kids will be confused at some point because they're all freshmen. So if we can, you know, make us the aggressor versus them having us on our heels, I think it's better for this team. Do you think UCLA is uh, susceptible to being? No, they space different. They're not, their whole thing is, okay, where are you coming from? And we'll throw it to that guy behind us and then come from there, we'll, they, they space the court really wide. That's what they do. So when you play that way against this kind of press, it's, you know, it's not going to be as effective. Sometimes you're pressing and the only thing you're wearing out is yourself. You're not wearing them out, you're wearing yourself out. So this may be a team that we don't press much against. John, there's going to be a particular father missing from the sidelines of UCLA. I'm kind of curious as to the secret of your success in dealing with all the dads that have come through the program through the years. Well, they've trusted me with their sons. And it's mothers, too. Um, I don't go in and, and, and tell a bunch of, you know, this is how we're going to play and it's not what we do. I mean, I keep it real and, and we undersell and over deliver. And we talk about their son. You know, whatever his dreams are, we're chasing them with them. And so the parents have all trusted us. Now, the ones that did not trust us because whether they were told something and if they, they believed it, they don't send their sons here. So that's basically why. If they don't believe we're what we're saying we are, don't believe that. That's not true. He'll platoon you. You can't be the man. And they don't trust that we're going to do what's right for their son, along with other sons. They don't come here. They go somewhere else. John, how would you try to deal with a father like the bar Hall? Don't know. Probably if I were in that situation, I would think about it. But uh, the one, one thing I want you all to understand, um, there are the way he presents stuff, maybe I don't agree with, but what I do love is he loves his sons. He's a father who loves, loves his sons. And you gotta respect that. I mean, uh, there are many kids out there would love to have a father who had paid that much attention to him. And so how he presents some things, maybe I don't agree with, there's, you know, but there's some other people in the country that are presenting things in a way that I don't agree with either. Now, Vince Marrow said yesterday that you've been a big help in football recruiting and that he's brought guys by shoot around sometimes. What's that relationship been like? Well, I, I think again, um, I say there's a, when you're in the seat I'm in, it's important that Craig Skinner comes by with recruits, um, that we have Bob Rotella meet with our team and then both golf teams, um, that uh, we enlist. Um, our baseball coach Nick was in there the other day. I go to the baseball games when I watch Mark, and, and we're, we're here to help each other because this is really hard. Um, uh, coach Floriel worked with our guys. If I have the best track coach in the country and my guys are struggling to run the right way, why wouldn't I just ask him? And you know what? He worked every afternoon with some of our guys that needed it. And, and that's how this is supposed to be here. I mean, I'm not you know, up in that office and watching tape and don't come around. And I apologize to Mark uh, because 
I met with uh, Vince and the three kids, and we took them through the practice facility and the new locker room, and I said, now, this isn't as nice as football, but this is nice. And uh, he laughed about it, but the other players didn't get to the locker room, and I called Mark, and I said, I apologize. I had to get out to the game. He said, no, nah, we had trouble with tickets and da 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 but um, I'm happy for uh, their ability to sign 20 guys. Um, you know, some guys, if they hadn't signed, would have been poached later. Somebody would have missed somebody, and all of a sudden they come after our guys. So now we got them. And if there are three or four guys in that group of players that we would not have gotten, this was really worth it. It's really worth it. How stands out to you about UCLA? What's that? What stands out to you about UCLA? Um, they, uh, they really create havoc in spacing in their pick and rolls, and they're different. They're more of a pick and pop team. Um, but their big kid now is way stronger. Um, he'll, they'll go four around the post and throw it to him. He's a terrific passer, uh, but maybe their best shooter. So now he'll step out on the floor for threes. They'll put him in pick and pops. They'll run cuts off him to step him back. Um, they're they're going to create havoc for us. Um, I, you know, I'm watching games and it's just like, okay, I can't go over everything with this team. There's things that are going to happen in the game that they're just going to have to react to and we're going to have to do our best. And that's the, the issue with where we are. I'm trying to zone in on three or four things in the last couple of days. That's it. I can't try to do 12 things. So there are three or four things that we're trying to do. And as long as we do that, if they do something else, and I tell them all the time, if they do something that confuses you and we haven't worked on it, I'm not going to blame these guys. I'm just not. And, and again, we're a bunch of freshmen that are out there. We're getting better. We're trending the right way. Now the question I had for him yesterday, my whole day is trying to figure out how can I do a better job to keep these guys going in the right direction. And their question to themselves needs to be, am I in the right frame of mind that I'm walking in every day to get better? My body hurts. Oh, you're going to get better that day. This is crazy. We going again? You're really going to improve that day. I can't wait till I'm done with this because I'm going to go back and play. Oh, you're going to be great today and you're going to get better. How do you stay engaged throughout a practice? My job is to hold you accountable. We got on Hobby the other day and Kenny Page said something to him and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you, everybody here think that we like Hobby? that we want what's best for them, yeah. So anything we're saying to you is to help you. Not that you, you don't have to act like you're mad about us saying something. We're here for you. And they said the best thing for you guys is not a staff member is afraid to coach you. None of us are intimidated by you, not a, none of us are impressed with you, and we're not afraid to coach you. And at the end of the day, I hope you respect that. If you're mad about that, sometimes it's better to be Peed off and peed on. I don't know what to tell you. But. Tell yeah. us the significance of New Orleans to this program here, given what you did in 2012 and, and what the guys in the NBA franchise there that they're all the guys. Well, we played in 2010, and I remember Eric Bledsoe having a great game. Um, the game we, I think my teams have played probably eight or nine games in New Orleans before I got here. Then we played those three games, those two games, and then we played two other games in one, and then we played Vanderbilt. What's the significance of the Vanderbilt game? It's, it's when Michael Kidd Gilchrist came in and said, start Darius in my place. So the biggest game in the history of this program may have been that loss. Because that lesson will go on and on and on because of what he did for his teammates and what happened. We won a national championship because of that move by Michael K. Gilchrist. And then we come back and we, who did we beat in the semifinals? Florida. Who? Florida. 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 That was Lowell. It was Lowell. Lowell? Oh, I'm talking the SEC. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. You were wrong, Jerry. Um, <laughs> make sure you mark that down. He was wrong. He had an excuse, but he was wrong. <laughs> And I want you to print it. He said that, and, and but when I looked it up, he was wrong. <laughs> Please do that. Thank um, you. And then, and then, who was the, the final game? Was Kansas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Off the wall question. 
No, no, from you <laughs> chasing me down the hallway, go ahead. I can't run anymore, Kevin. Couldn't run that. Um, with the new taxes, UK is going to have to pay a 21% excise tax on your salary. Any thought or comment about that? Um, I haven't. You, you, what are you, going through the tax bill already? You're asking me about a tax bill. I'm trying to hold on to this team. I'm, I got a noose around my neck, my feet are dangling, my hands are bleeding, my eyes are bugging out of my head, and he's asking me about a tax bill. Are you crazy? What, so tell me what it is. What? It's 21% excise tax on your salary because of how much you make. Additional. Wow. Let's see if we can work something out. <laughs> John, this is only your third travel experience with the team. Can you get a sense early on of how this team is going to do, playing on the road, traveling together? They've been great. They've been great. I mean, uh, you know, the, the experience in, in, in Chicago, the experience in New York City, I thought they were ready for that game. I thought the Kansas game they were ready for. Um, and, and now this game, uh, we'll see how we play. Uh, we get right into the league play, and, and we've got a couple of really tough road games, so we'll know. Um, you know, it's not as though uh, uh, we've played every game in this building, even though I petitioned the NCAA to see if they'd let us. But, I mean, you know, this is a young team. This is a bunch of freshmen. When you say to me, how do you think they're going to play, your guess is as good as my guess. I mean, they're young. You know, I, I can only tell you that they've – they're trying every day. I'm walking out of practice feeling good. Don't know what that means. Does that mean we're good enough to beat UCLA? I don't know. When I watch the tape, I'm scared to death. Um, you know, Steve does a great job. We've played against each other a bunch now. We've coached against each other a bunch. Um, he's a good friend. You know, sad thing is one of us got to go. Can we tie in this game? Is there any ties? Someone got to go to Christmas feeling sad. I hope it's him, but it could be me. Calvin, last question. Does Welsh's skill set make this a difficult type yeah, it's a tough game matchup for anybody in yeah. particular on your end? Yeah, because Sasha, he's going to try to take Sasha right next to the basket and bang him, and he'll try to take Nick outside. And I imagine that's what they're going to do based on who's guarding him. And then how do we play? Do we scramble the game up? Do you double team, which makes the game easy for some of these other guys? How do you play pick and roll? Do you really help so that kid gets shots? Do you trap and then he slides? I mean, do you, how, how are you really going to play this uh, to give yourself a chance? And again, can we honestly come in with like, okay, there's four ways we're going to play pick and roll. Come on. There's one way and maybe a backup, and if those two don't work, who's our next game? I mean, you know, it's where we are right now. And like I said, we're getting better, and that's, you know, uh, and not, when I say we, I'm saying individual players are improving, which means our ceiling continues to rise. And, and again, I know we're not getting the respect nationally. That's okay. I get it. But as each of these players gets better, the ceiling for this team starts to get higher and higher. And the one thing, and this may be a game where we're exploited a little bit, but we, we guard fairly good. Like the last game was a hard one for us. But we turned them over, which is defense. And we out-rebounded them, which is defense. But they shot a high percentage, but guess what? I think in the country they were one or two. I'll be corrected on that, but I think they were one or two in three-point shooting and two-point shooting. So we played a really good team and happened to win the game. Thanks, guys.